coming back to Singapore after 15 years to stay with Auntie June and to do an internship with a local TV station. I was very excited. Nice to see you again. You were so young when your parents migrated. Robert will be happy to meet you too. Robert? <laughs> I don't think I've met any Robert until June. Oh, you have forgotten my son Robert. But never mind, you'll meet him tonight. I told him that you were coming back from the States to stay with me for one whole year. <laughs> <laughs> time waits for no one. As time rolls by, we all grow old. Along with old age comes illness. Sometimes one of them being dementia. And sometimes along with this illness comes mind games. My name is Zat, and welcome to Incredible Tales. In today's episode, we meet a rich but lonely lady. In people's eyes, she lives in a world of her own. Is she playing tricks with everybody's mind, or is her mind really playing tricks with her? Let's find out. My name is Sophie, and this is a story of an old friend of my mother's. I called her Auntie June and was very fond of her before we migrated to the States when I was just 12 years old. This Thank is you. my maid, Anna. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. She's been with me for some time. We were Auntie June's neighbour only for two years before we migrated. In those two years, my mother had become very fond of Auntie June as she felt sorry for the old lady who had no family or friends. Auntie June never troubled anyone and would always mind her own business. Anna, can I have more sugar in my tea please? Yes, Mum. Have you worked here long? Oh yes, five years already. I work part-time, so I go off in the evening and come back every morning to cook and clean for mom. Anna, do you know Robert? Auntie June keeps talking to me about him. She said that's her son. <laughs> that's impossible. She's not even married. But Julia, he is not real. She just imagines. What do you mean? When I first joined, mom told me she has dementia. Now. She always talks to people, even if nobody's there. Really? I don't know. My mom used to be really close to Auntie June. She would be so sad to know that she... Anna, can you make dinner for Robert? He's coming for dinner tonight. Okay, Mom. All right? And Sophie, dear, make yourself at home. All right? Ask Anna for whatever you need. I'm going to lie down for a little while. Yeah, Auntie Jane. Okay. I'll go take a nap, right. too. It's about time, Robert, that you should have a girlfriend. Right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. You must bring more new friends to meet your mother. You know. And we can have a very good party. I'll ask Anna to buy. Now, let me see. Oh, yes. You like to eat that kind of biscuits with chocolate inside. Yeah. I don't know why I walked back into my room. It was very creepy seeing Auntie June talking to nobody, even though Anna had told me she was suffering from dementia. I was so scared that I just didn't leave my room that night. Mom? Yeah? Maybe I get the locksmith to open this lock, then I can clean this room. Yes, yes, yes. I've been telling everyone, my Anna is the best. She keeps the house so clean and looks after me so well. Mom, maybe the keys are in your cupboard somewhere. You keep it safely and you don't remember. How shall I help you find it? 
Yes, I spoke to Robert last night. I'm safe with Anna. She's very good, and he mustn't worry about me. Morning, Auntie Jean. Oh, Sorry, I'm still lagging. Didn't wake up. Oh, it's all right. But you miss Robert. Don't worry. You can meet him again the next time he visits. You know. Hey, Anna. Buy more cookies and keep huh? some good friends of mine might visit this evening. Okay, Mom. Auntie June, do you always have a lot of visitors? <laughs> yes, but uh, it's mostly Robert who comes to visit me. Robert is a very friendly person, and he has many friends, and he always brings them to meet me. Oh. You, Auntie June. The door's open, you can just come in. I couldn't believe Auntie June would have a swinging party with imaginary people. Unfortunately, there was nothing anyone could do. Is the surprise in store for Sophie? What's going to happen that will put certain doubts in Sophie's mind? Find out after the break. Morning, Anna. Such a mess, isn't it? I find ants and cockroaches coming out from that room because that room has never been cleaned. And she cannot find the key. So forgetful she is. Mom won't even let me break that lock. Morning, Sophie. Did you have a good sleep? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I slept a little late because Robert was here last night with some friends. Did you sleep well? I did, but there was a loud knock on my door at 3 a.m. and there was no one. <laughs> I must have been imagining. <laughs> That naughty boy! That must be Robert. I told him not to wake you up. But he says, whenever he's here, you are always asleep. <laughs> so he just wants to wake you up. Auntie June, you have to stop waking up in the middle of the night and knocking on my door, okay? But that's not me. And you have to find the key. Anna needs to clean the room. Oh, Anna! She is the best maid I have. You know, this year, Chinese New Year. I want to give her... I have become quite close to Auntie June, and we both became very fond of each other. But I couldn't understand why every time we talked about the locked room, she changed the topic. That night, I was in for a surprise. to see the room that was always locked was open. I could hear Auntie June mumbling something, but I couldn't understand what. 
I was going to open the door, but I don't know what made me stop. Maybe I just didn't want to betray the trust between Auntie June and myself by snooping around. But I was definitely going to bring it up. Sophia, it's so nice of you to spend your Sunday with an old lady in the park. You're not old. <laughs> and I like spending my Sundays with you. You know, when I was pregnant with Robin, I used to go to walks in a wooded area near my house. Even though... Auntie June, stop. You have to stop talking about this imaginary son, okay? You don't have a son. You weren't even married. Oh, uh, I think I need to sit. Auntie June, one more thing. Why didn't you let Anna clean that locked room? Why are you so secretive about that room? This house is so old. After I die. Auntie June, please don't change the subject. It was actually quite sad to see her like that as her dementia seemed to get worse day by day. And you are such a clever boy. How can you do that? Kevin, I don't think what you did is quite right, you know? Your parents will be very sad. Auntie June. Oh, so true. I thought you promised not to wake up tonight. What are you doing? <laughs> Sophie, meet Kevin. He is leaving now. He's our neighbor's son. A very clever boy. Come, Kevin. Let's ask go. Okay? Good night, Sophie. people in our neighborhood. The neighbor's son hung himself. I saw them taking the body when I was coming to work this morning. <laughs> That's so sad. You know, mom used to say when Kevin was a little boy, he always come here and ask mom for sweets. Mom used to hide and give him sweets because his mother doesn't like Kevin coming here. Sophie? Meet Kevin. He's our neighbor's son. Wait, did you say his name was Kevin? Yes, Kevin. And you're sure he died last night? Yes, I know their maid. She told me she found him hanging in his room just before dinner time. I couldn't believe that the previous night, Auntie June was talking to an imaginary person, Kevin. Suddenly, I started doubting that Auntie June had dementia at all. Could there be something else that I didn't know about? I was working late that night and was very tired. Suddenly, I was woken up by a cry that seemed to get louder and louder. Why won't you come back, Robert? <laughs> don't go away. <laughs> Please don't go away, Robert. Please don't go away. Please don't go away, Robert. You're mad. You're absolutely mad. What are you doing? Where do you get a thing from? He, he, he's not coming back to me. He's not coming back to me. Open the door. Go away, you're a single lady. 
Auntie June told me her story. She used to live in Malaysia. She fell in love and ran away with a rich man who was 15 years older than her and came to Singapore. Her family did not accept the man because he had a family of his own. So Auntie June lived as his mistress. Since she led a scandalous and secretive life, she didn't have any friends. When she was 35 years old, she had a baby boy. He was such a lovely boy. I named him Robert. He was the most special thing in my life. We were so close. This is a big house with many rooms, but Robert always slept with me at night. Hey, what's wrong with still me? I love you, Ma. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you more. I love you more than anything else in the entire world. And I would do anything for you. Anything. Then suddenly, out of the blue, something happened. Ma, <laughs> you're making my favorite soup. Mm-hmm. Can you smell? Careful, it's hot, okay? Yummy! <laughs> I know. Can you help me go get lemongrass, babe? Yes, Ma. All right. I'll never forgive myself for sending him to pluck lemongrass. Uh, I didn't know that would be the last time I would see him alive. <laughs> and... That day, he was taking so long in the backyard that I went out to check. I called Robert. 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 Baby. Robert. Robert. Please, John. Please, Robert. Please, Robert. Robert, please. Baby, the hell! Somebody help me, baby! Baby, please don't! No, Robert, no! Someone help! Please! Please, someone help! Robert, no! Robert. Robert's father, he knew herbal medicine, but, but Robert was already dead! I must have been so hard on you. Yes, it's, it's very hard. Then one month later, Robert's father died of a heart attack. He was a good man. He looked after Robert and me and loved us. He left me this house and enough money to last me a lifetime. But what was the use? What was the use? I was all alone. Being lonely all these years, you communicate with different spirits? Yes. They are my only companions. Dementia was the perfect cover-up as Auntie June could freely communicate with the spirits without anybody suspecting anything. She happily lived in a little world of ghosts. But even spirits need to move on. After all these years, my Robert, he wanted to move over to the other side. I was so sad when he says, 
if I keep on calling for him, he, he could not move on. Look, Hopper, he just wanted me to let him go. Oh, Robert, Robert, I will really be all alone. Oh. Don't say that, Auntie Joan. Oh, is my Robert. I'm here with you. I'm like your daughter. <laughs> Robert. Robert. Getting rid of the tombstone was the only way Auntie June could break ties with her dead son and let his soul move on and rest in peace. We buried all the toys in the backyard and tried to wipe away all the memories. It was going to be a new beginning for Auntie June. Auntie June found so much comfort by keeping her son here, by not letting go of his tombstone. But like the living, the dead need to move on too. Even though Auntie June lost her son again in a different way, she found a daughter in Sophie. Who knows? Did the spirits make that happen? Is it possible? Well, just maybe. We'll never know. This is Ut, signing off for Incredible Tales.